if you do have a large switching environment and you want to implement server and client for lower administration, then you can configure something called BTP password to help prevent against a common danger called the, configure, the configuration revision. The other things with VTP is for one that's required is a domain. So any switches that are enabled for a VTP server or clients, they should definitely be in the same domain in order for those changes of VLANs to be propagated among each other. The default actually is null. So there actually is no domain name associated. So you want to create your own domain name. And all the clients and servers are in that same domain. And again, you have the option of configuring a password, a VTP password, for your server and client um, environment if you're inclined to have those combinations implemented. So that comes down to the next question of configuration revision. Whenever you make, you create a new VLAN or you delete a VLAN, for example, on a VTP server, the configuration revision, which is something identified with VTP, that number will keep increasing. And as it increases, that information is propagated to the other clients. The client sees this VTP packet, for example, with a new VLAN or a VLAN that's being deleted. And it's looking at this configuration revision, looking at the number, and it's looking at its current number. If it sees that the number is equal or lower than this number, it will not accept those changes. If it sees that the number is higher, let me, you know, like we're adding a new VLAN, so the number increments by the server, it will say, okay, this actually is a new packet with new information about VLANs. So I will accept that and make those necessary changes of adding or deleting it. That's how um, VTP uses the revision feature among the servers and clients, knowing what is up to date and what is stale, etc. But there's a danger to that. Let's, let's, show, let's show this further as an example. So here is another example of, again, we have VLAN 1. We have trunking between these two switches. These are the hosts on VLAN 1. It's recommended that you configure at least one or two of your switches, kind of like a primary as a secondary, as your VTP server, and then the other as a client, meaning that any VLANs configured or deleted in the future, I would have to do that from my server. And those changes will be propagated if they're in the same domain to the client. So here's an example where I say if I create VLAN 2, I have to create it on the VTP server. And then that will be propagated to the VTP client within that domain where I can now place various ports, for example, in VLAN 2. Doing so, let's say that doing so made the configuration revision number 100 on the server. It's going to propagate that out and the client, which will very likely have a lower number, let's say 99, will see that 100 is higher and accept those changes of VLAN 2. So at the end of the day, all the switches should have the same configuration revision number. Here's the tricky situation that I've seen and can bring a network quickly down to pieces. So let's say, for example, we have our network, right? So we have our network here that has a VTP server and a client. We have VLAN 1, VLAN 2, and they both have a configuration revision number of 100. Let's say that you're in a lab. You got a separate switch, and we know that by default, the VTP mode is a server. And so this is testing purposes, you're, you know, it's configured in the same domain name. So you have, let's say, a computer, 192.168.1.12 in VLAN 1, and you're just playing around with, with a lot of stuff. You're adding, you're deleting VLANs, you're doing a lot of stuff. Doing so has made your config revision number to 110. Now you decide, okay, I've learned this stuff, we need another switch. I need to plug this into my network. So you plug that directly into your network, and um, you know you do your um, dot one q trunking. So what do you think is going to happen in this particular case? What's going to happen is once it's connected, it's, it's a server, but more important, it's part of the same domain. It's going to propagate VTP messages out with 
a config revision number of 110. Well, you see that this server only, that this switch only has one VLAN, which is VLAN 1. There is no VLAN 2. So it's sending out um, those VTP messages that the client and the server are going to hear. They're going to say, oh, the config revision number is 110. It is higher than what I currently have, which is 100. Therefore, I will accept those changes, which means VLAN 1, which is already there, but you didn't have VLAN 2, so I will remove VLAN 2 from my table. Doing that will make these hosts, just like that, unresponsive to connectivity for services. And these could be critical servers that now have lost complete connectivity. So now you have to configure VLAN 2 and do all the proper announcements. And I should have updated here, but these config revision numbers would then be updated to 110. That is the danger for VTP, and that's why it's recommended to configure these as, as VTP transparent modes, because if this is plugged in, those changes would not affect your production environment. So be careful of using VTP servers and VTP clients on your network, and it's recommended to use VTP transparent modes in any case possible, even if it requires a lot of VLANs, you can, a lot of switches, I mean, because you can do a lot of automation and scripts to enable VLANs on your environment. Span tree protocol. So the purpose of the span tree protocol is that it's used to prevent against loops on a layer two network. Loops on a network is bad, and you will commonly see that when things are fully meshed. There are some common, uh, so these are the common span tree protocols. The first, which is called uh, PVST, which, was, which we can call legacy span tree, stands for per VLAN span tree. Uh, this is the one that is widely used, at least in the very beginning, but gave us a lot of issues because the convergence of that is very slow. I mean, we're talking about 45 seconds for layer two changes to occur and for span tree to start uh, going through its different um, states of listening, learning, forwarding, and blocking. The recommended span tree protocol to use is uh, rapid span tree or um, RSTP. It's also known under the industry name as 802.1W. The best way I like to tell people in terms of learning this that the W means it's a winner. Is definitely recommended and a lot of people use that where it gives the convergence time for span tree changes from like 45 seconds uh, down to around mm, roughly 800 milliseconds so it gives a very faster convergence for uh, for networking in terms of the layer 2 switching there are mechanisms for doing things called backbone FAS uplink, um, uplink FAS and that sort of thing but a lot of those things are also included within the rapid span tree, and you'll get that with a lot of the newer hardware. Next, you have multiple span tree, or MST, and this is considered as 802.1S. 